Okay, so let's get this started. 23 over 15, we got divide, so remember the numerator is inside. 15, 1, 15, you got 8 left over, decimal, decimal out of 0. Uh, 15 goes into 8 5 times, which is 75, I believe. 5 left over, bring a 0 down. 15 goes into 53 times, which is 45. And 5 left over again, so I'm not even going to continue, because if I bring a 0 down, you know it's going to be 3 times again. So it's going to be 1.5333 forever and ever. And the short version of that is this. Remember that the bar notation goes on the repeating number. 14 over 27. <coughs> it's going to be a small number. 27 does not go into 14, so let's add the decimals, which allows me to add that 0. So 6 times 12, no, it's going to be 5. 5 times 7 is 35, right? Because 3, 135, and I'm going to have 50 left over. I add a 0, right? And it's 1, which is 27, 23 left, uh, sorry, 23 left over, <coughs> let me add a 0, bring it down, 230, uh, I have no idea what this is, 27 goes to 30, 8 times, no, uh, uh, 8, 16, 9, 9, I think it's 8 times, so it's 27 times 8, 6 goes 5, 16, 216, 27, yeah, it's definitely 8 times. 56 goes 5, 16, 2, 16, and we have going to have 14 left over. I'm going to stop here because <clears throat> I don't know how far or how many is going to repeat. So your test will probably say round to the nearest 100, so that's enough. We already have the 1,000. So 0 0.518 rounded to the nearest hundreds would be 0 0.52. Okay, rounded. <clears throat> Find the difference between these two numbers. Okay, so... In order to find a difference, which means subtract, right? I need to find, well, I can't subtract in the way they are right now, but I can subtract as a fraction. So let me find out what their fraction equivalent is. So 12.34 bar notation, I'll multiply this by 100 because there's two repeating numbers, this by 100, and I'm going to get 100x equals, <coughs> and remember what, so I'm going to put it over here. So I'm not 12.34, 34, 34, right? So if I multiply by 100, this decimal moves to over. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 34 repeated, right? So I'm going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 1,234.34. And I should have actually lined up the decimal, so I apologize. And if I subtract, 100 minus x is 99x. And on this side, the, these, is two, uh, these two, the, the, the bar notations are going to be 0. 1,234, it's going to be 1,222. Right, 1,234 minus 12, divide by 99, divide by 99, and x equals 1,222. And I'm not going to simplify, I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Because I still have to do the other part. The other part is 8.51, so x equals 8.51. <coughs> and again, I'm going to multiply by 100, so I'm going to get 100x over here. And if I multiply, so again, imagine what that is, right? That's what 8.51 bar notation is. So if you multiply by 100, we know that this decimal is going to move 2 over. So it's going to become 851. And then 51 bar notation, right? 851 point, so it's going to be 851.5151, 51, 51, 51, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> so I can now subtract. So this is going to be 99x. The bar notations go away. And 851 minus 8 is going to be 843. Divide by 99. And x equals 843 over 99, which now I can subtract. So I have 1, 2, 2, 2 over 99 minus 843 over 99. Oh, oh stop, stop. I don't know what that was. Um, and then equals, um, so 1,222 minus 843. It's going to be, I have no idea, borrow. 12 becomes 11, becomes 11, and becomes 12. 12 minus 3 is 9, 11 minus 4 is 7, 11 minus 8 is 3. So it's 379 over 99, which I will not change the mixed number. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there. 3. Okay, 3. Again, manipulate the numbers to your advantage. So let me just get rid of something here. It's a negative times a negative times a positive. So, sorry, it's a negative times a negative divided by a positive. So it's going to give me a negative answer. 
right? Because these two is going to be, I'm sorry, positive answer. My answer is positive. I know that much. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. So let's focus on multiplying these two first. 2.5 as a fraction is 25 over 10 times 2 over 15. And you know what? I'm going to change that to its reciprocal and then it's going to be, well, let's do these two first. Sorry, I'll take that back. 2 and 10, it's going to be divided by 2, divided by 2 is 5, and then 25 and 15, I can simplify by dividing by 5. 5 divided by, 25 divided by 5 is 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3. Oh, and guess what? We can do the 5 and the 5. So this first part over here, up to here, it's equal to 1 third, right? Now I'm going to take that 1 third and divide it by 5 over 12, and it's going to be 1 third times 12 over 5. I can simplify to 12 and 3, divide by 3 is 1, divide by 3 is 4, and my final answer is 4 fifths. Very, very simple. Determine the sum. Okay, so we're going to add two mixed numbers, and i much rather deal with an improper fraction. So 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8 is 26 over 9. Minus, and then minus, and inside the parentheses here it's 40, 47 over 8. Big number, but it's okay. <clears throat> All right, let me change this. Negative uh, 26 over 9 plus 47 over 8. So I don't have to worry about the sign. I change the subtraction to an addition problem. The LCM is 72, so it's going to be 72 here plus 72 here. Sorry, this is negative. So this is times 8, so I multiply the top times 8, which is 48 plus 4, 12, 168. It's going to be times 9, so the top is going to be times 9. 47 times 9 is 3, 6, 36, 425. It's a negative plus a positive. Who wins? The positive. So my answer is going to be positive over 72. And then I have to find the difference. Why are they going to win? Because there's more. How many more? Let's figure it out. Uh, bar of 3 becomes 11. 13 minus 8 is 5. 11 minus 6 is 5. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So going to be 255 over 72, which I, again, I'm just going to leave as it is. 5, evaluate. So now this is a complex, eh, you know, a little bit of complex fraction here. So again, um, let's, uh, let me do that last. So let me do 4 fifths. So that says 4 fifths minus 3 sevenths. So that's all I want to focus on. So 4 fifths minus 3 sevenths. First of all, the LCM is 35. So it's times 7, so 28 over here, and 15. And that's going to give me 13 over 35. So in essence, this thing over here on top, I can write it as 13 over 35. So let me write the, write the problem down. So 13 over 35 divided by 120. Right? I'm going to put this in parentheses and divide. Well, actually, I don't need to. Divide by 110, and then minus 0 0.5 bar notation. So we can take care of these two. 13 over 35 times 20 over 1. I can simplify 20 and 35, divide top and bottom by 5, which is 4, by 5, which is 7. And I'm going to get 13 times 4, which is 42 over 7, minus 0 0.5 bar notation. So let's find out what 0 0.5 bar notation is. And I'm just going to erase this to get some more. Um, <clears throat> so 47 over 7, uh, 0 0.5 bar notation. So x equals 0 0.5, bar notation, multiply this by 10, multiply this side by 10, and I'm going to get 10x, and if I multiply 5, 0 0.5555555, multiply that by 10, the decimal shifts one over, right? So this end up, ends up becoming 5.55555 forever, or bar notation. That becomes 0, that becomes 5, that becomes 9x. And x is going to be 5 over 9. Remember, I'm dividing both sides by 9. Yeah. So let me replace this. So again, 47 over 42 over 7 minus 5 over 9. So this is my transformation. Now well, it's just simple, very simple uh, subtraction. 63 is my LCM. Out of the 7 becomes 63 times 9. So I'm going to multiply the top times 9. 42 times 9 is 18, 379. And then how did the 9 become 7? 63 times 7. So multiply this by 7 and I get a 35. Good. 63. 
and 378 minus uh, what do you call 35 is going to be a 3 or 343. Let's just leave it at that. They're both divisible. And let me see 7, 10. They're not divisible by 3. So just change the mixed number. But I'm going to leave it like that. And that would have been completely fine with me. 5, you can skip because obviously I gave you the answer in class. I don't know why, but I did. So here is number 7, the area of a rectangular playground. So we have a playground. Right? And I know that if I multiply uh, base times height or length times width, let's just call it length times width. Length times width, if I multiply those two, so the area is length times width, and the area is what I have, so it's 840 and 1 fifth. Uh, the width, I know, but the length, so I left, I'm gonna leave it as my variable, and my width is going to be 20 and a half. <clears throat> so it's a uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 20 and a half right so I just divide this by 20 and a half and divide this by 20 and a half my L here gets isolated so I can cross these out and over here we're going to do 840 and 1 fifth divided by 20 um, what do you call it? and a half so it's your choice if you want to change it to a decimal if you think it's better to do this 840.2 divided by 20.5 you can you're more than welcome to do that I'm gonna keep it as a fraction but I'm gonna change it to a uh, what do you call a uh, improper fraction so to me it's going to look like well it's five so I'm gonna to have to multiply 840 times 5 which is 0, 0, 4701 4, over 5 and I'm gonna divide that by 20 and a half, which is 2 times 20 is 40, 41 over 2. I'm going to now change it to multiplication problem. So it's 4701 uh, over 5 times 2 over 41. This doesn't look like there is anything I can, what do you call, what do you call, uh, simplify. So I'm just going to multiply across. So at the bottom, 5 times 41 is 205. And then 4701 times 2 is going to be... Uh, two zero four nine thousand four hundred two, and we got to figure out how many times two hundred five goes into nine hundred four nine thousand four hundred two. You know what? Just because, let's do that. So I'm gonna change up to a mixed number, right? So how many times? So nine thousand four hundred two. 205. I might take this back and say that maybe it was better to do with decimals. So 205 goes into 944 times, which is 20 goes 2 is a 2, and 4 times 2 is an 8. Subtract, I'm going to get 1, 2, 0, and bring down the 2, and that looks like it's going to be 5 times, and then 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2, and then the 10. And if I subtract this, I'm going to get 1 here, a 10 over here, which becomes a 9. So 12 minus 5 is 7. 9 minus 2 is 7. 177. I'm going to stop here because I'm changing this to a mixed number. So 205 goes into 9,402 45 times. How many left over? 177 over 205. So this would be the length of my, and this is in feet. This would be the length of my, uh, playground it does make sense because if you think about what area is is length times height right so whatever I multiply the two numbers I multiply has to be around 840 I know the width is about it's 20 and the, the length is 45 and 20 times 45 is somewhere near there no no I might I might be off by a little bit uh, by a little bit um, five 25, no, that's okay, because 20 times 45 is already 900. There's something off here. <clears throat> mm. 20 and a half, hang on a second, 5, 0, 5 times 0, I use times 5 is 0, 20 goes to 40, and this should have been 40 
should be 42. I don't know where I got to 7. So here's my mistake right here. Adjust it. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole problem again, but adjust it. But I definitely know that I made a mistake. So this is the wrong answer. Okay. So wrong. I'm going to write wrong answer over here. Okay. I made a mistake. Okay, but hopefully you sort of understood the rest. Um, eight. Johnny has three boards measuring eight feet in length. So here's my one board. That's eight feet. This is another board, eight feet. Another board, eight feet. So they're eight, eight, eight. So they're a total of 24 feet. He wants to cut them into two and three, two and two thirds feeding legs. How much left over will we have? Well, I have 24 feet in total, right? I cut them into two and three sevenths. How many pieces will I have and will I have any leftovers? So that's the question, first of all. So let me put this 24 over one. Divide that by seven times two is 14 plus three is 17 over seven. 24 over one times 7 over 17 and that's gonna give me can I simplify anything no nope. 17 at the bottom and uh, 7 is 28 goes to 14 168 in this case I have to change the mixed number so 168 divided by 17 is going to be 9 9 times 7 is 63 goes 6 and 153. So I'm going to have subtract a 5 and a 1. I'm going to stop here because I already have my answer. So this as a mixed number is 9 and 15 over 17. So how many boards can I, how many full complete boards that measure this can I make? I can make 9. And how many left over? I'm going to have 15, 17. So my leftover is 15 over 17 of a foot of a board is going to be left. Okay. Nueve. What's with the string? There's a lot of string. So, 200, 200 feet. Ugh. So, I noticed that this is in yards. And this is in feet. This is in inches. Ugh. So, and how much is left over in feet? She started with one eight hundred and eighty six. So here's what it looks like. I had 889.76 feet of string. I'm going to use 22.5 yards. And then I'm going to use 78.35 feet of something. And then I'm going to use 900 inches of the pink string. Now, I can't subtract because they're all in different units. So my unit here, because I started with this, I'm going to change everything to feet. So one foot is no, one yard. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna write one yard is three feet. I'm going to make my changes. So 22.5 times 3, because I want to change into feet, it's going to be 15 goes 1, 7, 2, 6, 67. So I'm going to do and change this to minus 67.5 feet. The second one is already in feet. Awesome. And I have 900 inches, and I'm going to change the inches into foot. So 12 inches equals 1 foot, right? So if I have 900 inches, how many? Uh, how many feet would that be? So well, in this case, I'm going to have to divide 900 divided by 12, which is 12 goes into 96, 7 times, which is 84. 6 left over, bring the 0 down. 12 goes into 60, 75 times. So that equals to 75 feet. So it's going to be 189.76 minus 67.5 minus 78.35 and minus 75. So in the interest of time, this is just a very simple subtraction problem, right? So just subtract, subtract them. So 189.76 minus 67.5 equals something, minus 78.37 equals something, and minus 75 feet equals something. So you're going to have 
After you subtract all that, the answer is going to be that you have 31.09 feet left over. Okay, because it's 189 minus all that you used. So the problem here was changing everything to the same uh, unit. So, so this is almost like that beef problem or meat problem we did in class. So here's a pumpkin, and that's the actual weight. She wants to make sure that the pumping, pump, pumpkin is much bigger this year. So that was, so uh, what do you call? We're going to have to multiply this by one and one third, which is uh, one and one third. And then so two, 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 two times one and one third is three, four thirds. So she wants her pumpkin next year to be this much. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. Okay. For now. And then only because the second part says out of this, right, out of this, which is the pumpkin much bigger, right? The new size of the pumpkin, the new weight of the pumpkin. She wants, out of all that, she wants to use three-fifths to make pumpkin pie. So she's going to use a large chunk of that pumpkin to to make pie. So let's multiply by three-fifths. This and this can, uh, what do you call, simplify. And then you have 888 divided by 5. So 888 divided by 5, and I'll do it on the side here. 888 divided by 5. It's one, five, three, eight, seven, thirty-five, one. Eight comes down, it's three, which is fifteen. And then three over here, bring the eight down, which is gonna be a seven, it's gonna be thirty-five, and three left over, and I'm gonna add a decimal and a decimal here, and I'm gonna allow me to bring a zero down, so it's gonna be six, and five goes into thirty-six times. So it's going to be one, three, sorry. One seven three seven point six. So out of this whole weight here of the new weight of the pumpkin, she's going to use one seven three seven point six for pi. So and just so that we get an idea, let's let me see what eight thousand eight hundred eighty eight divided by three is. Let me write that as a uh, what do you call as a uh, mixed number so we get an idea of the weight. So divided by three goes to 6, 28, 9, 27, 18, which is a 6, right, so it's 18, 0, drop to 8, it's going to be 2 times, which is 6, and then a 2 left over, I'm going to add a decimal here, bring a 0 down, 3 goes into 20, 6 times, which is 18, we have it repeating something, so actually, let me take that back. I don't want to add the decimal. All right, so I know that 8,888 divided by 3 is going to be 2,000. Doesn't look right. Um, 2,000. Oh, it does. 2,962 and 2 over 3 pounds. So the pumpkin is going to grow from 2,222. To this that's what she would like it to be and out of the 2,962 and out of the 2,962 she's going to use this much to make pie okay. 11 uh, the length of a rectangle okay, so again length is 1 and 7 ninth inches the width here twice that so just multiply one and seven ninth times two and that's nine sixteen over nine if you multiply that by two you're gonna get thirty um, ten sixteen nine. you're gonna get uh, thirty two over nine so the width this is inches by the way you're gonna get thirty two over nine inches or nine goes in thirty two Four times, no, three times, which is 27, 3 and 5, 9. So, or 3 and 5, 9. So you have now the dimensions of your, uh, of your what? Of your uh, rectangle, right? So to find the area, it's going to be 1 and 7, 9 times 3 and 5, 9. To 
to find the perimeter. To find the perimeter, right? So we, this is one and seven ninth. Then this is three and five ninth. Now to find the perimeter, we're going to do. We're going to add them, right? And let me see. Let me just add these two. Three and five ninth plus one and seven ninth. It's going to be well, four. It's going to be five. What am I doing? Seven ninth is twelve over nine. It's five plus seven is twelve, so you're gonna get four twelves over nine, and twelve over nine is one and three ninths, or one and one third. So it's gonna be five and one third times two. Let me just do this the right way. All confusing everybody. So to find the area, I'm gonna multiply those two. Let's finish finding the area. Oops. So nine times one is nine, 16 over nine, times three times nine is 27, plus five is 32, 32 over nine. Can I simplify anything? Not really. So this is gonna be 81. And on the top, 16 times 32 is going to be 512. Let's change that to a mixed number, right? So 800, so again, let's divide. Again, a lot of work. No, not too much. I'm gonna do 512, this is 512, right? right? Yep, 512. So 512 divided by 81, it's gonna be six, six times at least. Six, 48, let's subtract, it's gonna be a 10, it's gonna be a 12, it's six, 28. So I'm not going to go any further because 81 can go. So this is a, this as a mixed number. Remember, this is 512. So it's 626 over 81. So that's the area. Uh, what's the unit? Inches squared. You would lose a whole point for not writing that. Okay. And then the perimeter is going to be 3 and 5 9 plus 3 and 5 9 plus 1 and 7 9. That's one and seven nine. If I add my whole numbers, if I add my whole numbers, I'm going to get three, six, seven, eight. So that's my whole numbers. My fractions, five plus five is ten, seventeen, twenty-four. So eight and eight and twenty-four over nine obviously doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna change I make the eight over here, I'm gonna change twenty-four over nine into a mixed number. Nine goes into twenty-four two times which is 18, and you have 6 over 9 left over. Well, you have two whole numbers. I can combine that. So I get 10 and 6 9 or 10 and 2 thirds. That's my final answer. And that would be the perimeter. Okay, 10 and 2 thirds, just inches. Um, identify the sets that each number belongs to. So, do I have room here? Negative 8. So I'm going to write over here on top. Negative 8 is a uh, integer and a, in, and a rational number. 4 over 7 is just a rational number. It's not anything else. The square root of 144 is the 12, and 12 is a counting number. It's a whole number. It's an integer. And it's a rational number. Square root of 21, on the other hand, is just any rational number because it's a decimal that it's a non-terminating, non-repeating, a decimal that doesn't repeat and never ends. Okay, that's what square root of 21 is. Um, well, this is just a, again, just a simple, what do you call, decimal problem. So Kim bought two Apple Watches, so it's 462.84 times 2. The new MacBook Pro, which is 2,434.84. Two tickets to Australia, each is 1,893.11 times 2. And she started, okay, what is this thing? And she's at times 2. Right, so I'm going to have to add all that up. And she started with $10,000. So. Will she have any left over to buy the headphones? 
Oh, let's figure what this is. Okay, so we got actually put a different value. So 462.84. We bought two of those. 462.84. Going to give us nine hundred and twenty-five dollars and point sixty-eight. That's a lot of money. Plus the apple, two thousand four hundred thirty-four, which is again a lot of money. And then what did she buy for? Oh, the tickets to Australia. Oh my God. It's going to be three thousand seven hundred and eighty-six point twenty-two. That's a lot of money. So. Adding it up, the model, let me bring the decimal first. 10, 14 goes 1, 10, 17 goes 1, 16 goes 1, 14 goes 1, 21 goes 2, and it looks like she spent this much. $10,000 is what she started with. Let me take that comma. Um, and then let's subtract the expenses. So, Ten thousand dollars um, I'm going to subtract seven one four six point seven four that's going to give us two thousand eight hundred fifty three point twenty six and change and there's obviously some room to buy the headphones so the headphones how many can she buy? We're not asking for change, but so if I have 2,853.26, and I'm just going to take that 0.26, I'll write 26, divide that by 349.95. So I already moved the decimal two over. That's why they're both whole numbers. So what is this? 285,000. That's about 35,000. 285,000. Let me see. I think I brought it that way. It's about eight. Eight. Uh, I can buy eight headphones. I mean, I don't know why, but with eight headphones, it's going to cost me twenty-seven two seven nine. <coughs> Twenty-seven nine nine six zero. If I subtract, it's a six. Twelve nine six again. It's going to be a six. That's also twelve minus nine is going to be a four. Four. Fourteen minus nine is going to be a five. That's going to be a zero. So I'm going to have. Something is wrong here. Two eight five three point two six. Move the two over. Three four nine nine five. Oh yeah, it's fine. So I'm gonna have. Uh, and it says how many Dr. Dre's headphones can I buy? I can buy eight of them. All right, and that would be my final answer. That's cool. So it is three thirty nine. Oh my god. I need to go. A German Shepherd weighs 50 and one fourth pounds. So, and again, the Beagle weighs three fifth that amount. So, a way of thinking is that the Beagle is three fifth of, and of in multiplication is time, three fifth of 50 and one fourth. Change that to a, what do you call, mixed not improper. Four times 50 is 200, or 201 over four. Can I simplify anything? I hate when I can simplify. So that's going to be uh, 80, no, 20. No, 20, and this is going to be 603. 20 goes into 603 30 times. 603 and over 20, left over. So the weight of the beagle is 30 and 3 uh, pounds. That's a big beagle. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Well, a little bit above average. Last one, <clears throat> again, make your life easier. I would definitely change this to a fraction, so 2 fifth divided by negative 55 over 100. I would much, much rather deal with that. 
You want to change two fifths to zero point four and divide. That's okay too. Use decimal. So it's two fifths divided by a hundred over fifty five. This is going to be one. It's going to be twenty five, and that's going to be fifty over fifty five, which I could have reduced before, but I didn't. And then it's going to give me divided by five is ten. Eleven. That should be it. This one. It's going to be nine point four. Minus 8.2. And then this plus and a minus here, I'm just going to change it right, just minus 7.9 plus 6.35. <clears throat> Do these two first. It's a negative 9.4 minus negative 8.2. Guys, please take the time to change it. All right? It makes it easier for you to see. They're friends. So if you add, just because it's more negative, the more things to the left, it's going to be 6. 17.6. Minus 7.9, right? I'm going to take care of this guy. Again, we can change it. Okay, and uh, it's going to be negative again. So let me put this 17.6 and 7.9. They're both friends. 15, 15, 25.5. 25.5. .5. .5. And then the last part here is plus 6.35. And if we add those two, there's definitely going to be more negative left over. So um, it's going to be 25, 5, 6.35, which is not a deal I'm crazy with. Do some borrowing. 1, 14, 14, 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. Oh, I didn't have to borrow here. So, hang on a second. So I'm going to borrow from here. 10 minus 5 is 5, 4 minus 3 is 1. This 2 belongs to this guy. 15 minus 6 is 9, and 1. So final answer, left over, negative, right? So it's going to be negative 19.8. That seems like it's, that's it.